Welcome back to BioMed Buddy. Today we're going to talk about the Bacharach Firite Gas Analyzer. We're going to use the analyzer to confirm the accuracy of the set point for CO2 in incubators. First we're going to talk about some setup of the Firite. We have two types of Firite by the way. One is for CO2 and one is for incubator. It's the same Firite container except for the fact that you're using different solutions. CO2 is red, O2 is blue. Today we're only going to be talking about the CO2. First some prep work. First thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I have adequate firite in my analyzer. You want it to be not less than one inch or more than five eighths of an inch above the bottom of the small center bore in order to prevent scale zero adjustment. What we are referring to is that, that red, the red firite solution you want to have range so that you can up move your indicator up and down so that you can zero it. In this case we have plenty of Firite solution in it. If it was low, I would simply take a couple drops of water and add a couple drops of water to the top, which I'm not going to do. I'm just demonstrating that I would push the plunger down and add water. Since it's adequate enough, what I am going to do is I'm going to first push it down and vent it to atmospheric pressure, basically room CO2. That being zero, I am then going to move my scale so that it is, okay, not to get in your way, so that it is zero. Now, if I want to check this, what I would do is revent it, hold it upside down. By the way, it's good practice to try holding just the fins and then invert it. Notice that I'm holding it on an angle. That allows the firite solution to um, flow a little better downward. And I'm going to do it twice. So I want to make sure I get a good atmospheric uh, CO2 of, of, of zero. Now, if you can notice the bubbles in this, you will find that in the book it sits and says that's an indication of the firite needing to be replaced. I will tell you that I have not experienced that to be true because I've replaced it brand new and there's still bubbles like that. What I do is I just shake it a little and the bubbles seem to go away. And then I want to zero. As you can see, it came back to zero. Um, that's as it should be. This should always go back to zero for the most part after you've vented it to uh, room air, which is essentially zero CO2. So I've got enough fluid and we are zero. I'm going to set this down. Second thing I want to show you is the sampling device. You have a ball. You have the connector that connects to the top of the CO2, which you just simply push it when you want to take a gas sample. And you have the side that goes inside the incubator. You'll see this cloth filter. That should be damp. So what I am going to do is simply remove the filter. Got a little water here. I quite frankly use distilled water. Squeeze out the excess. Put it back in. This ensures you the best accuracy for CO2. Now I'm going to reassemble this. Okay. Now let's take a reading. 
Well, first, before we take a reading, let's check the accuracy of this instrument. I'm going to check the accuracy of the instrument by breathing into it. I'm going to take a breath. Try to hold my breath. About 30 seconds. And then I'm going to blow into it. With a little luck, we got the sample from my exhale. Let's see in a second. All right, there you are. Your exhaled breath is approximately 4%. And as you can see, we are about 4%. General practice when I make a measurement, by the way, is to take and rotate this twice, not just once. So for each sample, I really am going to rotate it 180 degrees twice. As a safety precaution, I will tell you never want to invert this with this plunger pushed. Of course, the reason why is because it will, the firelight will leak all over the floor. As you can see, I'm holding in an angle and I'm venting it to get it back to room air. And this should go back to the original zero. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. Now, let's take a measurement of our CO2 incubator. I am simply going to, trying to hold on to the fins, I'm going to push down here. I'm going to attach my other end to the incubator. There is a, from, some incubators are different. Some of them you'll have a steel rod and you'll have a hole in the door that you can go in to get a sample. Most of them nowadays have a sample port. I have seen a couple incubators that have a sample port on the side. Taking a sample from the incubator. Hook up the end of the tubing. Push down on the top. Trying to hold on to the fins, push down on the top, 18 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now as I stated earlier for accuracy, what I want to do is invert this until all the solution has went to the other end. Back. And again, note that I hold, it, I, I hold it at a little of an angle. Just makes your flow go a little bit smoother as once. And there is twice. As you can see, our fire right is showing an indicator, indication of somewhere around 4%. I'm going to shake it a little again to get a little way away from my bubbles. So hopefully you can see it a little better. And there's 4%. Some tips. Before the firite solution has to be changed, um, for CO2, you can get approximately 350 samples. That is based on a CO2 percent of 10. Another suggestion I have for you is that when you go to store this unit, make sure you store it in an upright position. This is very corrosive. And if you store it in any other position, what will happen is your firite solution will cause the plunger to stick and it will be, un be unoperable. Stay tuned for the next video, which we're going to be discussing 
the maintenance to the Baccarat Firewrite Analyzer.